Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be testing out some emulation on this low cost Chromebook that I recently picked up. I picked this up from my local Walmart for $129 and it's the Lenovo Chromebook 3. I've done a little research on this and this thing will be on sale for Black Friday. I mean, they're going to be all over the place and there's rumor that the price is going to be as low as $99. Now this video isn't about should I buy this specific Chromebook for emulation or gaming on a Chromebook. It's more about if this is all you have, what can you do with it? Now with everything going on in the world right now, a lot of people are doing school from home using a Chromebook, a lot of people are doing work from home using a Chromebook, and you might already have something laying around that's capable of doing what this little machine can do here. Now this is a low-end Chromebook. Like I said, it was $130 and that's regular price at my local Walmart. So this is far from a high-end machine like a Pixelbook Go or the Samsung Chromebooks. And personally, I've never even thought about spending $1,000 or even $600 on a Chromebook. And I'd say for me personally, up to $200, depending on the specs, is a decent deal for a nice little Chromebook. But this one was $130 and we're going to see what it can do today. But I do have to say there was more built into this than I thought there would be given the price I paid for it. We have USB Type-C for charging over on the left hand side, USB 3.0, micro SD card reader, and a headphone jack. Moving over to the right hand side, we have another USB 3.0 port and another USB Type-C. And this actually does video out with an adapter. I've tested it with my USB Type-C to HDMI and it does support video out. So if you want to use an external monitor with something like this, it will work. Now this only has 32 gigabytes of internal storage built in. So I will be adding a micro SD card. It's a 128 gigabyte SAN disk, and for my controller, I'm using a Moga XP5X Bluetooth controller. As for the specs on this Chromebook, for the CPU, we have the Intel Celeron N4020. This is a dual core CPU with a base clock of 1.1 gigahertz up to 2.8. The GPU is the built-in Intel UHD 600 graphics up to 650 megahertz, and we have 4 gigs of LP DDR4 RAM. And that Wi-Fi was actually pretty important to me because I am a big fan of cloud gaming, be it xCloud or Xbox Game Streaming, GeForce Now, and even sometimes Stadia. And if you really want to get any PC gaming done on a Chromebook, that's really what you're going to need to do. Either that, or using in-home streaming with something like Steam Link. So when it comes to emulation or even just general gaming on a Chromebook, there's really no better choice than using Android apps. With all of these new Chromebooks that are coming out, you will have access to Google Play. You're just going to sign in like you would with your Google account, and you can download your favorite apps from here. Now keep in mind, not every single app is going to be available here, but a majority of them are, as long as the developers set this up for x86 or compiled it for x86, which is the CPU we have in this Chromebook, it's going to be on the Play Store and it will work. And thankfully, 99% of the emulator developers have done this, and we can access everything from RetroArch, Mupin64 plus FZ, Redream, Dolphin, PPSSPP, even Drastic, the DS emulator. So we do have lots of choices here and lots of options to play our favorite retro games on a Chromebook. And personally, on my Chromebook, for a lot of emulation, I use RetroArch. We have a ton of different cores in here that are available. We can do NES, SNES, PC Engine, PlayStation 1, even N64. And when it comes to a dedicated Android device, I'm usually on the side of using a standalone emulator like Mupin 64 FZ. But I have tested the Mupin 64 Plus Core here with RetroArch, and it works absolutely amazing. So that's what I'm going to go with for this video. And we're going to start out with N64. I'm still using that MOGA controller. It is detected as an Xbox 360 controller. We do have the FPS up in the top right hand corner. And I'm going to go ahead and skip into some gameplay here because I was pretty impressed with the performance. So here it is, N64 running in RetroArch on this Chromebook. And as you can see, we're really close to 60. I mean, we're at 59 FPS. I've had really good luck with this cheap Chromebook and N64 emulation, even some of the harder ones to run like GoldenEye 007, which you'll see next. I didn't change any setting whatsoever, I just downloaded the core through RetroArch and started up my game. And, and by the way, all of my games are stored on my 128GB micro SD card. All right, so let's take it up a notch to Dreamcast. We're going to be using the Redream emulator. And I will say that the first two times I started this app up after downloading it from Google Play, it crashed on me. But I kept trying to start it up, and it finally worked, and everything's working great now. 
I am upscaled to 1280 by 960, and we're going to go ahead and load into Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. It works great on this little Chromebook. This Redream emulator is highly optimized for lower-end devices. Um, after all, I mean, this even works really good on the Raspberry Pi 4, so I suspected that we'd get good performance here. And overall, everything that I've tested has run at full speed, even with this upscale to 1280 by 960. Next up, we have some PSP using PPSSPP. With the first two games, I actually forgot to go full screen, so you'll see that Chrome menu bar at the bottom there, but it does work great. This is upscaled to 2x. The harder to run games, like Chains of Olympus and Ghosts of Sparta, will have to go to 1, but they do work. And here we are, 1x resolution with Chains of Olympus, and I'll go full screen and we'll get rid of that bar at the bottom. Now every once in a while, I do notice it dip down, but performance isn't bad. And if you really wanted to, you could turn frame skip on, up the resolution with this, it's going to be running at 30, but it'll still be pretty playable here. So as you saw, it handles N64, Dreamcast, and PSP very well. Now we're going to move up a bit to the Dolphin emulator with some GameCube and Wii games. I suspect that we're not going to get great performance out of a lot of this stuff, but I still want to test it. Now when running Android apps on a Chromebook, you're only going to have access to OpenGL. At least that's how it is right now as making this video. I personally haven't seen any Chromebook that supports Vulkan in Android. Hopefully it does come to Chromebooks in the future, but for right now, everything that you've seen running in this video and the Dolphin emulator will be using OpenGL because we just can't access Vulkan. So as I thought, we're not getting the best performance out of this one, and this isn't a super hard game to run. I put this in the medium category. It's trying so hard to keep that 60 FPS, but unfortunately, we just can't. And if we did have Vulkan support, I got a good feeling that a lot of these games would run pretty well. I'm now going to move over to Wind Waker. It's actually one of the more easier games to emulate, and I think we can do it with this one. So yeah, this one works pretty well, and this natively ran at 30 FPS on original GameCube hardware, so that's why we're at 30 now. We have the FPS up in the top right-hand corner, and overall, it's handling this game really well. So there definitely are some GameCube games that'll be fully playable on a Chromebook like this. And of course, if you had a higher-end chipset in your Chromebook, like an i3 or something like that, I'm sure we would get away with running a lot more of these GameCube games, but this one is the cheapest one I could find, coming in at $130, with a low-end Celeron dual-core CPU. And just because I'm here, I figured I'd go ahead and test a Wii game. We have Sonic Colors, which runs at 30 FPS, and this one really isn't that hard to emulate. It works quite well on lower-end chipsets, but as you can see, this little Chromebook is definitely struggling with this. 
This little inexpensive Chromebook did way better than I ever thought it would. And like I mentioned, this video isn't about should you go out and buy a Chromebook for emulation. I personally would definitely not do it. I would get a Windows laptop or something like that. But if you're stuck with a Chromebook right now and that's all you have, you can get away with emulating a ton of different systems on it. And a lot of these lower cost Chromebooks are coming with this same chipset, be it the N4000, the N4100, which is actually a quad core CPU, or this one here with the N4020. It does have a higher boost clock, but it doesn't sit there long at all. So if you do have a Chromebook or you do end up picking one up, as long as it has the N4000 or the N4100 or better, you should be good to go with everything you saw running in this video. But that's pretty much it for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I've been experimenting with Chromebooks for the last few months because I have kids and they're in online school right now and they have to use a Chromebook. So I've kind of been messing with them, trying to see what I could do. And overall, a lot can be done with a Chromebook if that's all you have on hand. If you're interested in picking something like this up, I will leave a few links in the description. But remember, Black Friday is coming and these are going to be on sale all over the place. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.